film critic, and he was also one of the programmers of the Berlin Film Festival. Are you for the forum program? Is that right? Yes, I was. Uh, we yeah. had a group of people, uh, including Eric Wolf, who is there, uh, and we did it for uh, approximately 30 years. But that was enough. <laughs> Afterwards, now I, I'm, we are still looking at films, we are talking to people, and we are following, we are testing the pulse, uh, the blood circulation of international film and the German film, of course. So uh, that's what we're doing, and we are participating in the programming of the Arsenal, which is a movie theater, a special movie theater in Berlin, which works the whole year round. Yes, thank you. And uh, as Bela mentioned, he's a legendary figure of the European cinema. Uh, when I first learned film history in the 70s, I learned it from this book. It was called the Gregor Patalas, and first we thought that uh, Gregor is just the first name of Patalas, but after we learned that uh, two uh, film historians, uh, Adam Patalas and Uri Gregor, uh, and I found on my bookshelves the first Hungarian edition of the so called Gregor Patalas. It was published, you won't believe it, in 66. And uh, the first German edition was published in '62. Uh, and Uri is a frequent guest of our film mix year by year. Uh, and he knows a lot about the breadth, not only about the film history, but about the present state of the European and the Hungarian yeah. film. So, first of all, I give the floor. Thank you very much for this interaction. I can say that uh, we feel uh, quite at, at home in the city because after so many visits we have made a number of friends and uh, we are welcome. This time we can only stay for a very short period because we have to be back in Berlin by tomorrow. Uh, so I'm sorry I cannot meet everyone whom I would like to meet, but anyway, it is nice and especially nice in this theatre. This theatre is unique. I don't think we have such a thing in, in Berlin. Most theatres were destroyed, but this is just marvelous. So, um, what I thought I could do is I'll tell you a little bit about um, our life and our work in connection to Hungarian cinema. Uh, what uh, kind of uh, films have we been shown? Which were our impressions? Which were the events uh, which, which happened uh, connected to uh, Hungarian cinema? And I can uh, make a progress from the early time to the more to the present and uh, work my way uh, through in, in, this, in this fashion. When uh, we started uh, the work and uh, also the history of the cinema, I'm really surprised to see the Hungarian edition here. Um, we were uh, young uh, students at the Free University in Berlin, and when uh, I came to Berlin uh, for the first time, uh, immediately I was looking for film uh, activities and film society, and there was a film society in, at the Free University, and um, so I entered into this uh, film society and started uh, regular work, which was mainly exhibiting films and discussing uh, about films and meeting filmmakers, asking them to be on the stage and, uh, and so on and so forth. That, uh, that was in the, in the 60s and um, the 60s was a time in Germany when we had the, the, the Adenauer government. Um, in our film history um, we uh, devoted I think only two or three pages to the film production, German film production of Arnold period because we hated most of these films and thought that they are worthless. So we treated them in a very, in a very brief way and the article in the Spiegel uh, about the book said three pages for the era of Arnold. That was the headline. So, <laughs> uh, but uh, that was the spirit and our, our attitude. Since we were uh, somehow in the opposition, we were 
in the opposition to, to cinema because the German cinema had not, at the time, we thought recovered from the Nazi period. It was still in a kind of limbo, in, in a kind of uh, lack of orientation, only catering for entertainment. Then, uh, of course, we had in 1962 the Oberhausen Manifesto, so the change started to come. But we said we were part of this change. Uh, taking place in, in Germany, in the field of culture, in the field of, of cinema. And um, since the, the official uh, political spirit at the time was very anti-communist, uh, we naturally were the opposition and we were, uh, I would say, interested in the, uh, what was happening on the other side of the uh, Iron Curtain and the Berlin Wall, which was built in 1961. We, uh, we were following with great deal of attention uh, all the movements uh, which were taking place in the socialist uh, uh, communist states on the other side of the Berlin Wall. It was very interesting for us uh, to make the comparison. In Berlin it was very uh, easy. Uh, you could uh, compare what was going on in the West and what was going on in the East. It was the attraction of uh, West Berlin at, at the time. When the wall was built in 1961, we were citizens of West Germany and we had West German passports and so we could still cross the border, even though it was very complicated, but we could cross the border and we could go to the other side and see what was happening there. So we spent a great deal of attention to uh, cinematic developments in the East European countries. and. Um, and we found the most interesting countries were, were uh, Poland and Hungary, basically, um, where most interesting movements were taking place. And maybe if I talk about the 60s, I must uh, call, I must mention Hungary in the first place, because there were several films of such great importance for, to us, but also in the European context, uh, which uh, I think uh, there was no um, corresponding example in other East European countries. So Hungary was number one on our table of, of interest. And um, we saw uh, many films by uh, directors who are famous and who are still working today. Um, one of the films which impressed us most was Istvan Sabo's film, The Father, Appa. And this film uh, we saw at the Moscow Film Festival. It's interesting, it was shown at the Moscow Film Festival and it won the first of all. Uh, you wouldn't believe that this happened, but it did actually happen. And, um, and in this film, uh, Father, we found many parallels to our own story. Um, the relationship to uh, the father figure, the father figure who becomes a mythical uh, figure, such uh, events, um, such stereotypes or uh, obsessions we had in our own private story, but also in the general story of, uh, of Germany and German history. So um, we got in, in touch, uh, we met uh, Istvan Sabo several times at different festivals. We finally showed his films also. We showed uh, APA in, uh, at, the, at the Arsenal, our own cinema, which was founded in uh, in 1970, but Ava was even before, so we showed it somewhere else. But uh, it, it's a film which we frequently have been showing, and we uh, possess a giant subtitle print. I think it was donated by Hungaro Film. Hungaro Film was a company very uh, friendly uh, to, to us, and um, at the time, the people to whom we talked was uh, Istvan Rosai and Rosai and Claire Christoph. Uh, whom we met at other festivals and they said, you are so interested in Hungarian cinema, you must come to Budapest and, and watch films there, then you will understand them better. And uh, okay, so we did and we uh, started uh, our frequent and rather regular visits to uh, Budapest and um, we were always in Bacholi Wurza in this building, uh, almost legendary for, for us so many times we have been there in the small screen room and the, and the ground floor, we have seen many films. And um, with these people of Hunga Film, we had a, a very a friendly uh, connection because they were open to us, they said uh, some things are possible and other things are not possible. And um, 
that you could, I'm not possible, uh, some, some dangerous firms, some difficult firms, which you, you better not ask for it because we cannot give it to you. There are several such examples. And, um, but after a couple of years, when things have calmed down, they said, now you can ask for this and you can, you can have the firm. And um, some interesting uh, incidents happened uh, from uh, Hungary because um, the Berlin Film Festival um, had a big crisis in 1970, it collapsed, it had to be stopped before the end because of some political conflict. Then afterwards uh, they thought, what can we do to continue the Berlin Film Festival? To, we must do something, it must go on, but something has to be changed. And so they called our association, which already existed, the Film Society, uh, called the Friends of the German Film Archive. Please come and rescue the Berlin Film Festival and you can have a section of your own and you can show the films you like and we give you the budget. We couldn't believe such an offer. We have offered a budget. Never before did we have such a budget. But um, it was the rescue of the Berlin Film Festival. That's why some of the possibilities were there. But the possibilities were limited because uh, it was uh, the time of the Cold War and uh, the Berlin Film Festival was created uh, in the anti-communist uh, doctrine, uh, like uh, showing only films from the so-called free, free world. And it meant that the East, uh, the East was automatically uh, omitted, didn't exist. After a while, it became clear that this was wrong and we had to uh, also make efforts to, to include the uh, Soviet Union and the other uh, socialist states. And, uh, but, but that proved very difficult because we were in West Berlin and West Berlin was considered uh, by uh, the Soviet Union and the Communist Bloc. It does not belong to West Germany, it is a separate entity. Uh, that's what they always uh, claim. And um, since the Berlin Film Festival, the West Berlin Festival was organized by the federal government also, uh, the Soviet Union and the social country said this is illegal, we cannot accept this connection between West Germany and West Berlin, uh, we will not participate. So this went on for several years, but uh, there were more and more efforts from West Berlin to attract also the socialist countries, to invite them, please give us your films. And um, interesting enough, uh, the first country which uh, was helping us to establish these foundations was Hungary. Because uh, Mr. Dushai, uh, approached us and said, what can we do? Uh, we want to give you some uh, of our films and uh, maybe uh, it is now a good time and we, we make a start. And so uh, we decided that uh, one um, Hungarian film of that period, 73 I think, uh, which is called by um, Peter Baccio, uh, it is called uh, the, the Dritte Anlauf in German which means the third step or something like that. Anyway, this film uh, was uh, scheduled to be shown in our program of the Berlin Film Festival. Uh, our program was called the International Forum of Young Cinema, later it was called Forum of New Cinema. And, um, but uh, a few days before the beginning, it became clear that the Soviet Union vetoed the participation of Hungary in the West Berlin Film Festival. The film had to be withdrawn. It was rather uh, disappointing and everybody was shocked. But um, Hungary film uh, was too quick, had made one step too, um, too early. Uh, so in this year, 1974, there was no uh, Hungarian film. But uh, one year later, then finally, finally, there was a green light by, from, from Moscow and, um, and all the uh, countries uh, came and participated in Hungary too, but not with film by Peter Bartsch, it was a film by Judith Ilek in, in 1975, Hungarian village, it was called in German. Um, I hesitate to pronounce the uh, Hungarian title because I may mispronounce it. Anyway, that was in 75. And <clears throat> since then, we have uh, shown uh, Hungarian films, I think, almost every year. Uh, because the situation was so interesting when we came here to the Battery outside and look at the new Hungarian films, we always found something. And um, we were very pleased.
police and uh, the people who came, we were giving help, the print was sent, the print was subtitled. We even tried to distribute uh, some of these films because we thought the film festival should not only show excellent films but also distribute later uh, to, so that the films are not forgotten, do not disappear. And that's what we did with uh, many films and including Hungarian films. And some of them were quite successful. So um, I could mention other names, other titles. I should mention Marta Nesaros, uh, whom you got to know very well, and we have been showing her films before the, the festival and after the festival, and again and again, and we have been on the stage with her discussing, and uh, we had a deep sympathy, I must say, for the films of Marta Nesaros, um, for various reasons, um, subject matter, feminist attitude, but also the, the style uh, we found quite, quite wonderful. And so these films we had built belong to us, and every time when there was something new by Mahatma Mithra, uh, we immediately uh, invited uh, these films. And other films which uh, we have been showing um, were the uh, documentary films by Istvan Dardai and Georgi Salah. Uh, we have been showing several of their films in 1978. We showed film, Regeni, now I pronounce Hungarian, but uh, <laughs> it is... Um, is oh, oh, welcome, welcome. And uh, film, film Roman, in German it was called Drei Schwestern. And this, uh, this was a wonderful experience for us because we were always looking for films which had uh, at the same time a political content, but also an um, experimental form trying to find new ways of expression. And um, this we found in the uh, films by Dada and uh, Sarah, we, we showed several, and not only this one. Uh, but and, and every time we felt these films belong to us because they operate on the border of um, documentary and fiction film, and, and this is maybe the most interesting area in filmmaking, uh, where uh, different genres uh, interact and you cannot determine exactly where uh, what is the nature of the film, but uh, of course it is a strong documentary element in these films and we have been, I can say in our work, mainly interested in, in the documentary because we still think that documentary is the source of cinema. The earliest films by Lumière were documentaries and the fresh inspiration uh, very often comes from documentary films. Also, we uh, would like to, to show the films by Dada and Sale because they are so very long. And um, this film, Film um, Roman, was, uh, had a length of 270 minutes, which is a considerable uh, length. But we are uh, very much in favor of, of that. We are interested in such films which uh, break the rules, which go beyond uh, the established formulas and try to invent something new. So a film which is very low or very short, why should a film always be 90 minutes long? It is, um, there is no reason except maybe commercial reason, but otherwise every format should be permitted at every length. And we have been showing the longest films and the shortest films. We have also been showing a film which is only one second long. It is a film by the Belgian uh, painter Marcel Bottas. It's a uh, one second uh, long film. Um, it was lost in our collection, but it was found, found again. It's a very, very short, of course. And we have shown very long films, uh, uh, like Ismail, uh, like Dara and Sarai, but even longer films. We have been shown by Claude Lanzmann, and I think the longest films we showed were uh, 16, uh, 16 hours long. Well, and Peter Martin's film, which uh, we spread over two days, if I'm not mistaken, 16 hours. Anyway, but um, many of our uh, events, our great uh, cinematic adventures, are connected with the films of, of great, great length. And um, I have to quote uh, our experience of seeing Satan uh, Taku by Belata which we also showed in our program, like other films by Bela Tha. And uh, Sadatago was one 
one of the most marvelous experiences of our life, I, I could say, because we heard about that film and we had to come to Budapest just only for this one film. And um, it was not quite finished, therefore we saw it in a studio, in a kind of laboratory situation, where after each reel there was an intermission because the reel had to be changed and also the sound reel had to be changed. So it took a while, uh, after each reel, you got up from your seat and you can drink a cup of coffee, go out into the lobby and have some conversation and then you return and see the next reel. And so on the entire day, from the morning to the evening when this dark outside, but it was a unique experience to see this film in this way and I think we were privileged, we were the only spectators to watch the film in that manner because otherwise the people watch it more coherent, uh, maybe we do uh, one or two interventions also because the film is otherwise too long, but um, uh, it was such a marvelous experience I must say and it stays in your mind for forever maybe, and uh, even when sometimes we meet people uh, and they say, yes, we have been following your work and your programs and we have been watching this film and that was so, so marvelous. Sometimes you can influence people's lives even, you can contribute to their socialization uh, by uh, such kind of uh, work exhibiting certain films and of course having the director present it was one of our principles to always invite the director and have a discussion with the audience because that usually is more interesting than, interesting than the press conference because the press conference asks always the same questions and the audience uh, which has just seen the film has the best questions. Not always, but quite, quite often. So it is our principle to always do that and we have been doing this with Bela's Bela film, of course, too. Uh, what else should I mention? I must mention uh, Gabo Bogi, of course. Gabo Bogi. Uh, we met at, uh, relatively early in the moment. Um, I can remember that uh, uh, we were in Budapest. It must have been in the 70s. And he said, are you interested to, to see experimental films? And I asked, experimental films? Do you have experimental films in Hungary? Of course, he said, of course. And we learned about the Behavala studio. And the Behavala studio was, I think, uh, unique in uh, East European, but, uh, but also European, maybe worldwide context. Such a center of creative invention and uh, courageous experimentation that was uh, it was really unique. It contributed to the uh, admiration which we had for Hungarian cinema. And um, Gabagoli showed, uh, on, I remember, on an editing table, 35 millimeter, we sat down somewhere and he showed uh, his own some, some films. And we were amazed and uh, enthusiastic, of course. And uh, we started to, uh, to invite Gabagoli. Uh, with, uh, with his films uh, se several times. Some of them were also shown at other German film festivals uh, like Mannheim. Mannheim Festival had also a strong tradition of showing Hungarian films. Sometimes we were quarreling who gets which film um, because we all wanted to have the same film. And um, yeah, and uh, we, were, we were meeting Gabo Budi and he was in uh, in my office and explained his um, his great plans, his great utopian concepts, and he was leaning over the table to get closer and closer, so uh, hypnotizing me, so I must uh, help him uh, achieve his experiments. And um, we showed Nazis at Psyche, of course, and I can remember that um, Istvan Rosa said, we don't know what to do with this film, it is so unusual, and it uh, well, is there an audience for this film and how long is it going to be and which version, there are several versions but maybe you can have the film and the, uh, we actually could get this film and it was a, a great success uh, people were enthusiastic and uh, Gawabodi was meeting, was making friends um, he was actually li living in, in Berlin with his family for, for a while and um, we became uh, 
close friends. And up to this day, there is still discussion, uh, Nazis and Psyche, which is the best version, how long should the film be, um, which copy uh, we can show. And uh, this happens sometimes with films that you don't know uh, which version is the best one. But um, I must really mention uh, Gababoni because it's one of the important points of our meeting with uh, Algerian cinema. And um, I think the, the high time, uh, there are like uh, different epochs. Uh, the first uh, encounters we had in the 60s, with, uh, I talked about, about uh, Ismael Sabo, uh, then we had the 70s and 80s, and um, there was a continuity in Algerian cinema. There is a continuity for some of the established directors because now we still see films by Ismael Sabo and by Mikos Jancho. It's wonderful. Mikos Jancho, we have even shown uh, some of his films in, in, I think in 2000 or uh, just after. Um, he is um, a unique figure, I think, in, in, in cinema because of uh, his stylistic invention, the, the, the freedom to, to juggle around with irony and uh, fantasy. And uh, this is just wonderful. And he establishes the record of a long time uh, film activity together with Manuel de Oliveira in Portugal, also uh, advanced age, but it is still possible to do films when you are 100 years old, we have seen. And, um, and then finally, uh, the present time in, uh, in Hungarian cinema, is a, there is a different uh, um, atmosphere in, in the air, I think, but we have um, repeatedly been, been struck by the uh, audacity large panorama of invention uh, which you can detect in uh, Hungarian films. And uh, I can mention Benedict Friedhoff. We have shown uh, two of his films in the forum program. And uh, Benedict Friedhoff has made such a progress that he, he was first with us when he was starting his career. And now he is, um, <coughs> he is in competitions and his latest film will be shown in the learning competition. That is quite normal development. The same was true for uh, Angelopoulos, Greek character, who unfortunately is dead now. <coughs> but he started also in, in the forum and then he progressed and was in the kind of uh, competition and other, or Venice, other competitions. So um, we have been following the latest uh, developments in Hungarian cinema and we are uh, surprised and sometimes fascinated of the, the high degree of, of in invention and courage for experiments and uh, different styles of uh, narration. Um, and um, I think this is, this is uh, wonderful. Uh, the landscape of Hungarian cinema up to the present and we recognize the problems which are connected with uh, such kind of films. But um, <clears throat> first of all, um, I personally always defend the uh, legitimacy of the uh, film for a small audience. In our country sometimes I can hear this film will have only 40,000 spectators. Do we really need such films? When I hear such a word I get quite angry and I defend the right of existence for these films because if these films would not exist then there would be stagnation and even the commercially successful cinema would not progress. So we need the contribution of such filmmakers who uh, cannot be understood by large audiences in the beginning, but they must work, their work must exist and it must be seen and discussed. And um, <clears throat> we have found with, with our work, the, the forum, that there is a definite audience for the so-called diff difficult films and people are actually asking for such films, to see these films and uh, we had uh, <coughs> for our festival program a large theatre, the Delphi in Berlin, maybe some people know it, it's even a little larger than this one and when we show really difficult films, it's hard to understand, the uh, cinema is packed. Uh, people are, are happy and they want to see such films, they want to discuss and think about. They don't want to sleep, but to think about uh, uh, various problems and about uh, cinematic possibilities. 
so uh, I always defend the right of existence of these films, and they have a difficult life, a difficult existence. But uh, today, with uh, new uh, technologies, uh, I think we can make films uh, sometimes uh, like an adventure. Um, the film which we seen yesterday by eleven directors is such an example that you can make a wonderful film very much alive, having a handwriting, reflecting many personalities, and it is done <coughs> with very little money, or as I have heard, with no money at all. So that is, although I still don't think it is an example which you can offer to anybody. But there is such a possibility. So um, I wish uh, Hungarian cinema to continue, to have the continuity which it has uh, followed up to, up, up to now, and this must continue. And if we can help from, from abroad, we will surely help by attracting attention, by stimulating, uh, maybe talking to influential people, if it is, makes any sense, to, uh, to create conditions in which uh, also cinema in Hungary can prosper and develop. And uh, so we, come, we have been coming here after being called by Beata to help Hungarian cinema. And what we can do, we will certainly do. So thank you for attention.